Okay, this is take six. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Michelle. You've reached my channel, Farm Girl. I have been coughing my head off, so I now have a holes in my mouth, if that's going to bug you. Just tune out. I'm going to try really, I don't have my cold anymore. I just have this little tickle in my throat that makes me crazy. And I have a glass of water and that didn't work. So I need to have the holes in my mouth and hopefully my um, cold medication will kick in soon. Any hoosies, welcome, welcome, welcome. Don't worry, it's not coronavirus. I didn't even go to the doctor. I lived through it. But it's been weeks. But you're not here to hear about that. What you are here to hear about is market. So it was a good market, y'all. Last year, I didn't really follow along. I was very busy. I'm pretty sure I had kids. Being born goat kids. If you're new here, I raised dairy goats. And um, we are about midway through. And um, I don't think I have any more does due soon. So, um, and I didn't have much of, I mean, we're in a pattern now where everything is very routine. So um, I didn't have a lot going on this weekend. And I'm sticking close to home in case um, anyone does decide to drop babies but um yeah so far so good and I have a lot of time on my hands and I was cleaning and actually I was sorting mostly through my cross stitch that's what I should have been super cleaning because that's what if you follow me on Instagram you know I've been cleaning my house top to bottom and um it's atrocious at times but it's real life I just show it as it really is there is um Nothing fancy. I live with two very messy boys, so my house is really never clean. They're like two little tornadoes that come behind me, and, and by two messy boys, I mean my son and my husband. So, um, I just played with my stash and um, made room for a new stash. That's how I spent my weekend. It was amazing. And I watched all the Instagram live feeds, and I was watching everybody's stories, and um, it looked like a great time. I would like to say a huge thank you to um, Deb, my own shop owner at Stitchville, and to all the other shop owners online and brick and mortar for doing that. I am not a crowd person. I went to Needlework Galleria once and it was fantastic, but there were a lot of people there. And the next year, it was double. And I'm really glad I got the opportunity to go. Um, I, I just can't do crowds. Like, I do go to the state fair. And um, it is torture. It is a little bit of torture. But, um, yeah. So, I'm especially thankful to um, all the shop owners and everything who go and, um, one, spend, make the expense, the time away from their businesses and their families to go and do that. Um, to bring us the latest and greatest on our time tables and not theirs. Um, it's pretty amazing. It is Wednesday, uh, February 10th or 11th, something like that. 10th, 11th, 12th, 11th, I think. And um, I got my first package of haul in the mail today from the amazing Jennifer at Jen's Stitching Niche. So, um, yeah, we're, we live in a day of instant gratification. <laughs> and um, I'm just the same as everyone else, so... I was super excited to um, get my package in the mail today. I haven't even opened it. I'm going to open it with you. But I have a few things I want to show you first. A few um, finishes, a few whips. I've been pretty monogamous in my stitching, but I do have um, a whip and a new start to show you. And um, But first, I want to show you a finish. I got this back from the framer. This is um, With Thy Needle and Thread, a Winter Rose Manor. This chart is not available right now. There was a rumor going around on Instagram that it was going to be available at market. And um, so if you heard me say that, I'm sorry. I kind of went with that because I heard somebody else say it. And um, it is not coming out at market. It is um, going to be a winter release is what Brenda said uh, with her winter releases. I kind of thought about that after I posted it. That it would be weird for her to release something winter in the spring. <laughs> That's not generally her MO. 
So it kind of makes sense that it'll be released with her winter charts. And I know everybody is very anxious um, to stitch it. Sorry, it's one. Of, it's my um, my lights here. Um, I have the I have all of my stuff stitched at Michael's Frame Shop. They use Aaron Brothers Framing, um, Michael's Craft Store, and they do a great job. I use um, the conservation glass, which is um, a UV protected, and then it's anti glare, which I love. A lot of people don't frame with glass. I do. I live on a farm. There's gravel everywhere, which creates a lot of dust. And I want my needlework protected. So anything that I um, spend the money to frame is going to go under glass. Um, they do a fantastic job. And um, my frame is just kind of a rustic wood frame. And I was going to put an inlay. Like here's... Oh, I didn't even bring the chart up with me. I don't think. But um, she's got a pretty little detail inlay in there. And I was going to do that. But I couldn't find the right frame, and I really liked this frame, and then it was already kind of painted, this two-tone. It's kind of a rustic gold, and I just think it's so pretty. So I get lots of questions every time I post this on Instagram, and yes, I used all the called-for colors. Um, the fabric is a, um, it's an R&R. &R. Is it Winter's Brew? I think it is. Um... Pretty sure it's um, a 36 count winter's brew. The called for is a 36 count dirty linen, which can be hard to find. And it is just a shade or two darker than this. So um, the house gets a little bit lost, but I don't mind it because I really, really, really love the color palette here. It's so beautiful. So the couple things I did do is um, you can see the shading on my bird's wing. Um, you can see the detail in it, but the top of the wing got lost a little bit. So I just did a little back stitch there. Um, <coughs> then the house, it does call for a back stitch here. And um, I also did it on this, this side of the house on and the back of the house just so that you could see it a little easier and I think I did that in the same color as the house um, so it doesn't stand out too much but you can see it does give it a little definition but this is just pretty much I think this is the this is absolutely uh, my most favorite stitch to date it is just so pretty I love the colors. It is just my color palette. I love it. Lots of pinks and corals and reds. I like reds. I'm not a huge, huge, like, I don't, red is not my favorite color. Like pink, this kind of dusty rose pink is like one of my favorite colors. So I just really enjoyed this and I'm super glad to have it done. And um, I'm just going to set that behind me so it doesn't fall on the floor. And then I have my whips here. So let me just pull those out. <clears throat> okay, so though that is going to be um <laughs> I have Henry, so my um the cover is a little atrocious because he got a hold of it a few times. Um, but there's the cover, and you can see the little bit of difference in the fabric. So there it is. Winter Rose Manor, so you can be looking for that for this fall. And I do have a piece of dirty linen in here. So let me show you the difference. It's subtle, but it is a titch darker. So um, when it's not behind glass, the color is, it's getting washed out a little bit, but you can see it is just a little bit darker. Okay, and then um, this is a new start, so let me show you what this is on this dirty linen. Okay, so this is Hands on Design Home. It's a uh, part of the, the block party. It's a series, and it's so cute, the little houses. So <coughs> it called for a 28-count um, dirty linen, a cashel. So I did get that and I started it and I don't know why 
I was not feeling it. It's fairly big too. Like this is the height of the pin cushion. So that was a lot bigger than what I expected it to be. So it would have been like this would have been one side. So I wasn't, I just could not get a grasp of that. So I started again on a 32 count and this is as far as I got. And you can see, and let me show you the size difference. So here are the same two trees side by side. I don't know, this is really terrible demonstration, isn't it? It's just a couple stitches shorter. But I think overall, I'm going to like the size of this one a little bit more. I even contemplated doing um, a 36, but I do really like this color of linen, so I wanted to stick with it. So that's as far as I got. Not much. I got a little frustrated having to restart it, but I've been looking forward to stitching that one for a long time. And I have... <coughs> So these patterns come with the little piece of wool that goes on the top. And then I also bought the buttons and these are from just another button company. They're so cute. And so I'm looking forward to getting that one done. I didn't want the buttons to be super huge either if I went down to a 36 um but yeah so just a little hang up but I will get back to that one I'm really feeling my big projects right now which I haven't really done that in a long time where I just really want to stitch on some of my my larger projects I'm going to put another holes in my mouth because I can feel the tickle starting and um I know I've said this before, I really, really want to get Maria Finney done. This is Shakespeare's Peddler. It was just released at market, so you can all get it now. It's a really beautiful sampler. And um, I have a good portion of the border and the alphabet done. And I have a spot in my house for it, most importantly. So I really want to um, get moving on that. Here is the floss for home. Okay, now seriously, Kathy's got a real way with colors. Her color palette speaks to me like big time. Isn't that just beautiful? It's like a rainbow. That's a good looking color palette, right? Yep, hard, hard impossible not to like that one. So that's on my agenda. Oops. Ugh. Okay, and then next, I have been diligently working on, I feel like I'm like up in your business. Let me just move this back. Okay, and then next, Harriet Elizabeth Co. Um, <clears throat> There's some of you out there that are selling this one with me. I have really enjoyed stitching this, but I have just, I cannot stop making mistakes on it. It's making me crazy, but I haven't been able to put it down because I, I really want to get it finished and I do enjoy it. I am stitching this. I don't know what the fabric is. Let me see if I have a tag in here anywhere. I don't know what the fabric is. I'm pretty sure it's um, it's an R and R, and I know it's a 32 count. Um, aside from that, it's kind of a mystery to me. I matched it to look like the picture on the cover because that's what I really loved, and I felt like let me give you let me show you the floss. I felt like the picture that's on the cover here was a really good representation of what the actual color palette is. Whew. So here are the threads. And I feel like that's pretty spot on. 
I feel like that's pretty, um, I'm sorry, it's kind of messy. But I feel like the color palette is pretty spot on according to the picture here. So I wanted to kind of stay true to that because I really liked this linen color. So um, this was just something that was in my stash. So that's what I pulled out. Oh, how about the front? Um, so yeah, it's been really enjoyable. Lots of people comment about um, the eyelet alphabet. And here's what I'll say about that. If you're really nervous, try it first and see what you think. You do want to pull it tight so that the holes open up and kind of see um, my holes open there. They're not quite as open as I would like, but I'm stitching on a 32 count and I'm using two strands over two threads. So it's a little bit bulky. I did that. One, the directions call for a 30 count fabric, two over two. And the other is because I saw the original at the retreat, Brenda brought it along and I wanted it to look like that. And I wanted it to be about the same size. So this is pretty comparable size wise. And um, the, the floss was kind of substantial, you know, it wasn't like primitive um, in like a traditional sampler sense where it was really faded. There was, um, it was kind of, it almost looked like wool. I believe the model was, or the, the original was actually stitched in silks. But you know, those old samplers, they're just kind of, um, the thread look a little chunky on it. And well, you can see it here. And I wanted mine to look like that. And I really feel like Brenda did a great job on this, knocked it out of the park, like color matching. Um, because this is a picture of the original. This is, this is not the, um, the reproduction. This is the original sampler, right? Yes. This is the original sampler. This is not the reproduction. So I really feel, and Brenda actually charted it from the back, which there's also a picture of the back because you know, the fronts get um, a little faded from sun and the backs are usually more vibrant. So that's the back of the sampler. And I really feel like the colors are true to the sampler. And I just want to reproduce it as close to the original as possible. And um, it's been really fun to stitch. I love, I wasn't sure about this dividing band because the thread calls for, I believe it's raspberry frost, which is kind of a purple. And I was like, what? And then this other color, which I don't remember is like brandy or something, um, but it works. I mean, and it's, it's just so pretty. And every time I kind of go, huh? I put it in and it looks amazing and it really has um, the feel of the antique, which I just really love. I just, I'm really enjoying it. I have gone through so much and dive because um, I have had to tear out so much. It's crazy. So I probably have, and I'm not even joking, I probably have four different um, end dive dye lots. And two of the skeins that I used were um, the double skeins of 10 yards so ugh, frustrating so that's the frustrating thing about frogging especially when you're using two strands is that um it gets to be expensive if you make too many mistakes because you lose all that thread because I don't reuse it after I rip it out a big huge section because it just gets so raggedy but beautifully muted colors I'm just really really loving this Lots of people ask what color the red is, and it's um, Gentle Arts, and it's pomegranate. Just so pretty. So I'm looking forward to having that done, and then um, that will go to the framer. And then I haven't decided if I'm going to focus on Maria Finney, because I do have one other chart that has been calling to me and has been a huge distraction. And I showed that to you last time. And that is um, this G. Leger. I'm pretty sure that that's... I know you guys love my Midwest French, so I don't want to disappoint. Um, but this is a Reflet Stay Soi. 
and um, the colors are so pretty. Okay, so let me show you my fabric choices for this one. So if any of you want to stitch it along with me, I would love to um, to have some of you stitching it. Okay, these are the choices. So originally I was going to stitch it on a Tyco. This, I felt a floss hit my feet. Oh yeah, it's my eighth skein of end dive. Don't want to lose that one. So um, first was Tyco. And I'm not feeling that for any other reason that I think it's a little too yellow for this particular sampler. And um, so that was a no for me. Then I thought, hey, how about Ren? That's a good neutral, right? So this was number two. And not super feeling that one either. And number three was just a simple, you know, platinum Belfast linen. And that is, I feel like that's a good choice. But I think I found the one that I really love. How about that one, right? So pretty. And this is a 36 count. They're all 36 count. This is a 36 count um, Lakeside Linen Chantilly Cream. Isn't that pretty? It does have just a little bit of a pinky tone to it. And I like that. I'm going to be stitching it in the silks. I contemplated for a brief moment doing the... Um, Overdyes, but I had already purchased most of the silks. But there are a couple of the colors in here that are um, really deep, like this. Um, and I have a hard time envisioning that in this soft color palette. I mean, I, I'm guessing like that L is probably done in this. I don't know. We'll have to see. But I did these. So these are the silks. Plus I got a handful of extras with some of these really dark colors. So if I wasn't feeling it, I could tone it down just a bit. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm going to stick with, um, with the silks. And this is, the other one was, there was like a really really bright orange maybe it was this one and um i wasn't really feeling that one either so i think i got this one to replace it i don't know we'll have to just kind of see um but some of them are just really bright and um we'll have to just see so i can, i have the option of swapping them out but i didn't want to be stuck while I was in the middle of stitching, I wanted to have options because I tend not to be super patient about things like that. So I am ready to start that if I can ever get Harriet done. I mean, I think I'm out of it. You know how like you have a ton of stuff kitted up and then you finish a bunch of stuff? Then you realize you have 9,000 skeins of um, endive and uh, baked apple. I am down to my last gain of endive because of Harriet and all of my mistakes. I also don't know how, but my border met. But as I was stitching some of the motifs, my border met. I mean, hello, that's something to be celebrated. But then as I was stitching the motifs, I realized, I don't know how that met because um, I noticed a couple of mistakes as I was stitching the letters. I don't know, but the nice thing is those motif motifs, you can um, move them around a stitch here and there and nobody, you'll never know if I don't tell you. And I'm not going to tell you. And I'm not going to invite you over if you point it out. <laughs> so that's where I'm at with that. I've seen lots of people posting it along. Um, that is one I'm stitching with Michelle at the Stripe Rose. I think she started it for her Labor Day or her leap year start. And um, I didn't start anything on leap year. I was going to, but I was afraid to distract myself from Harriet. 
because I'm afraid if I put her down, I might not ever go back to her because it's been, um, not, it's not, it hasn't been frustrating. It's just like, boy, you get frustrated with, you know, using all the floss and just like every time you think you've counted it 1600 times, you still make a mistake. That's, um, I've annoyed myself to no end doing that. Okay, next I have um, a few quilt finishes that um, after all of my um, stitching mistakes, I had to take a little break for a day or two and I worked on some quilting projects. So the first one is my oldest quilting whip ever. So this one I think I stitched, it's for sure, it's somewhere between 20 and 25 years ago. I, um, not stitch, I, I made this, I pieced this for my daughter, Allie, who was obsessed with horses. And, um, it's a, it's a 20 inch square and it's all pieced. It's a little horse and it's got a cute little mane and this cute little forelock and it's got a little button for the eye. And I thought it was a little bit, it was when batiks were kind of all the rage, but it was a little bit dated, so I took the green stripe that I had down here off and I put in this cute little floral to update it a little bit. And then I used this kind of corally floral binding to make it a little bit more modern. Um, it was super fun. I don't, I have no idea of the pattern information, so I'm sorry I can't give that to you. And then I just made it an envelope closure for the pillow and so that'll be going to my granddaughter um i did ask her if she wanted it i showed it to her and she was like yes grandma so she's super happy to be getting that and i'm super happy that it's finally done many of you watched during my vlogmas some quilting projects that i was working on and i had a little runner this was a kit um, is a limited edition kit, just a little, um, table topper. And it was a kit that I had bought my mother-in-law and, um, it was, she didn't get it. It was one of those frivolous, I think they're called kits. I bought it from the fat quarter shop several years ago. I actually bought it like half off on one of their flash sales as I knew my mother-in-law would love it. And um, she didn't get around to, I gave it to her the Christmas before she passed away. So um, and then she died in September. So I pieced that. So it kind of reminds me of her. And I just did a really simple um, straight line quilting on my machine. Oh, here, you can kind of see it better on the back. So just super simple. And um, the binding still needs to be um, sewn down but that's like easy and fun and so that'll be what it looks like I use a double fold binding with all of my quilts and then I always hand stitch no matter what and so that's what it'll look like when it's done so that will be one that's ready for Christmas and then you know I was trying to get some um, quilts done for my grandkids and I got the tops pieced but after some thought, I didn't want to quilt them myself. I really wanted them um, professionally quilted, so I took them to the quilter, and I got them back, and I've got the binding on, and it's kind of in the same state. So these are, um, I can't remember the um, something chicks. It's the fabric line is Swell Christmas. I don't know. If you go to the fat quarter shop and put in Swell Christmas, it'll come up. Um, so they're just five inch squares and then there's one row of stars which you use um, you know you fussy cut a snowman out and inset that row into the rows of blocks so let me see I can't go back too far I don't know if you're going to be able to see it Not too much to see, but that's it. And then I just did, had them do, or had her do, Kathy, a really simple meander, which you can't really see. The back is snowmen, 
You kind of see the quilting on there. And then for, that was Aiden's quilt. And then Lexi's quilt has more pinks. Hers is Santa's. And then the back is Santa. And so the binding is already on. They have the same binding, one in pink and one in blue. And um, so those are ready to go and those will be ready this Christmas. And they're six and eight, so by then they'll be seven and nine. I can't even believe it. But they will still love them. I cannot believe how fast time has gone and how big they are getting so fast. I have um, a bunch of kits for other quilts and I have been ugh, buying fabric like crazy and I need to stop because <laughs> I need to get some done. So I, I have um, limited myself now so that I need to get these finished. And I'll tell you, it is motivating when you get stuff back from the quilter. It's like getting stuff back from the framer. Like you want to get the next project done. And my goal was to have, by the time I pick these up, to have another quilt top ready for her and I didn't quite get there. But um, having these back and finishing some of these uh, languishing quilt projects has been a real motivator. And, um, it's fun getting back into quilting. I haven't, I used to quilt like back in the nineties, I quilted like I stitch now. And then I would just kind of mix in my stitching. So it's really nice to get back in the groove. I think this is a Bonnie and Camille fabric. And this is a, um, it's kind of a log cabin of sorts. It's kind of a modernized version of a log cabin. And I don't know, you can really see the, the pattern to it. But um, this is half the quilt, and then I have all the squares pieced, and I have these. I just need to finish squaring up those blocks and then sew them into rows, and that'll take no time at all. And I think I have three more rows to put on. It actually would seriously take an afternoon. That's how fast quilting is in the state that I have them, so... That's been really nice to have um, those finishes. Okay, and um, I think that's all I get. So let's get to haul. I seriously have not even opened my envelope. So let's see what I got. And this is, um, like I said, this is just number one. I'll have more coming tomorrow, which I'll share on Instagram. So if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can find me at Farm Girl Loves Goats. Ooh. Thank you, Jen. Ooh, it's a good hefty one. Okay. Love the smell in these parts. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so first and foremost, Stacy Nash. She has um Three, <clears throat> three new pin disc designs. So here is um, the first one. This is pink primrose. And here's another one, red hydrangea. I think Jen was out of the berries. So I think I ordered that from Teresa or I honestly, I don't remember. And then there's the back. I'm sure the back goes. This, this. These are so pretty. Um, uh, this, so this is the next in her series of Hollyberry Farm. So this is the stables at Hollyberry Farm. So Stacy has, um, I don't know if both of her, I know she's got draft horses and, um, her the second one she got is he's I'm pretty sure he's a Percheron so um, those look like Percherons to me so pretty 
just beautiful. So I can't wait. I cannot wait to start this one. Let me see if that was all my Stacey Nash. Okay, that was all this round. I've got some Plum Street. I belong with you. It's called, oh, it's called Sweetheart Hill, and it says I belong with you. How pretty is that? Look at that house. There. Very nice. Love that. Oh, this one, A Shepherd's Song. Isn't that beautiful? I love this. I lo May goodness and mercy follow thee all the days of your life, right? This is so beautiful. I wonder if this is gigantic, like... Oh yes, 285 by 178. So that's a good size sampler. Oh, it's so pretty. Isn't that pretty? That is on, ugh, I gotta stitch faster. Okay, then Teresa Kogut. Oh, this is so pretty. I've heard that this is gonna be hard to get to, and it is so pretty. She's got a couple samplers, and they are gargantuan. This one is 264 by 320 high. Gigantic. But this one isn't, I typically don't do ginormous projects like that because I'm just, I know I'm never going to finish them. This one felt doable to me because even though it's gargantuan, there is, um, there's a lot of interest and there's a lot of negative space. And then there's this house. It's, I love like a white or light colored house. I really love that. And look at how pretty that house is with all the windows. I just want to move in there. And the alphabet, the alphabet will go really quick. So this, this whole section would go pretty quick. And then this is just fun. A lot of components here to stitch. And then this has that house and that basket. Yes. This is beautiful. I love her people. They're so pretty. And the dogs and the cats, yes. So I love this, love it. Harbor Gray. So Jen sends um, a limited, that's a pretty skein of limited edition floss. Then I have Okay, so Sampler's Not Forgotten. They put out market exclusive kits and I'm not sure if these are, these are usually market exclusives and there's another Sparrow one that I haven't been able to get my hands on but um, I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to snag. It just looks very antique-ish and I love it. And it came with fabric threads, everything to finish it, including, um, this little pearl button and the ribbon. Oh, yes. I'm really looking, I was really curious about the linen. Is this whole thing stitched? No. I was wondering about this linen. It kind of looks like the whole thing is stitched. Let's see. It's not. One strand of floss over two threads. Oh, fill in the background with green. It is. It is, it is. Okay. Ooh. Good thing, it's not big though. So it's almost, it looks like needlepoint. I love those. I really enjoyed, it's not that big. I really enjoyed, um, their exclusive from last year, which was a motif from, is it the Summer Garden sampler? I really enjoyed stitching that and I thought it was really beautiful. Um, and the little band element down the side, so I'm really, really glad to have that. And next. 
Okay, my two, and I, I have more coming from, or I have one other Blackbird chart coming from Teresa. I thought this was the shop exclusive for Country Sampler. Um, so I pulled out my charts that Saturday that I was sorting through everything, and I realized it's different than the one that we were able to purchase as a shop exclusive. So I'm not sure where this came from or if it was just a new release, but a lot of their new releases came from... Uh, retreats through the year or shop exclusives that were through the year so um the bird one a couple of them I already I already own so I didn't have to buy those the other one I got was my heart can rest this one is stunning so I believe yes this was um based on an antique sampler but they just make it a little bit more special which so to me this wouldn't necessarily appeal to me but oh yeah the colors it, the flowers are just really faded and they just you know black birded it up and they added see the house there so they added oh it's just gorgeous they added some berries oh I guess the berries are in the tree on the original they're just really faded so they just made a beautiful, I mean, that is just beautiful. This is so pretty. I can't even. So pretty. And this in that really muted color palette of theirs. Oh, I just can't. It's so beautiful. So I'm looking forward to um, getting some of the, um, the sewing the sewing book as well and I did so this was my the little box that we painted for retreat and I've shown this before but I thought I'd show you a few of the projects that are in that book so they are um garden morning which is a little drum pin keep <coughs> and then there is my home and this one is um a little scissor case and it the scissors we also got um, the little matchbox case that the scissors go in. This is stitched one over one on a 28 count Lugana. And then it mounts to the top of this box. And let's see, there were some other goodies in here. There was also um, a button bag. This is called Summer Basket. I love this so much. The finishing is amazing and their fabric this must be a blackbird fabric I'm sure but just absolutely gorgeous all the linen came with as well and then this is the 28 count oh look it's even over dyed and um, we got to pick out one of Barb's buttons and I've got all the flosses here and some beautiful hand dyed seam binding ribbon. We were even gifted with a um, little pair of Kelmscott Designs stork scissors that go in the little matchbox. It was, it was so amazing. So I am not mad at all. I have an antique button from Barb. I mean, I'm not mad at all about having that book have some of these projects in it because there are 13 other projects that are in there that are fabulous. So I'm super stoked about having this from Retreat and just being able to fill it with all the little projects from um, that book. So I love, I love that. Okay, and then, um, and the rest is all my Brenda haul because you know I love me some Brenda Gervais so I had to have a little bit of everything so the souvenirs of the heart series I love I've loved all of them they're so beautiful so it started with um the ones from the retreat autumn and Amana, which oh love that and then um there was the little um peppermint I don't remember what it's called little peppermint cottage for Christmas and here is um a really beautiful patriotic one I really, really need to get those. So Manor at Quaker Hill, this beautiful sampler. Love this. I love the little pond and that border. Love that. And um, so I have a friend who's coming in a couple weeks. And our plan is <coughs> to um, paint our boxes 
and gather all the materials for um, these charts. So this one is Baltimore Salt Box. I love this. And so I have already ordered um, the box for this. And these are available from Country Stitches or you can, um, I believe she was gonna give information to uh, the shops as to where these boxes can be sourced as well. And I did see Teresa has, this is um, Salt Box Quilt Sampler. And I saw that Teresa Kitten Stitcher has these on her website. I believe they were $23 uh, shipping to US only. You cannot ship wood products out of the country uh, for disease purposes. This is uh, oh, interesting. She used a silk weaver. Golden oats. A lot of DMC in this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven skeins of DMC. One skein of Weeks Dye Works. Two skeins of Gentle Arts. And two skeins of classic color work. So um, this will be a relatively inexpensive stitch. And um, again, the box should be able to be um, sourced on her website. I picked up a box. I'm not sure if it will fit on here or not. The sampler is on a 40 count, nine and seven eighths by seven and three eighths. So this might even be a little bit big, we'll see. But I got that. Um, so that's Saltbox Quilt Sample. I think this is my favorite from her releases. <clears throat> but first coffee, I love this so much. Love that. I love the spoon. I'm hoping, let's see. Two and one eighth silver spoon. And you can get the charm. It's available on Country Stitches as well. Love this. I collect. There were a lot of um, tomato things at um, Market. Um, what was the other one that I really, really liked? from Teresa Curry, um, Needle Bling Designs. She's got one that's super cute too. And Kathy from Hands On Designs, she had one as well. Okay, oh, and I was like, oh, what is this? This is um, Token of Love, a miniature Quaker sampler. And this goes on this three drawer um, little cabinet. You actually turn it upside down and just flip. Oh, I already flipped the drawers over because I'll find with it. And then it gets mounted in the top. So I'm sure there are directions on um, what color to paint them. The Needleworker flashcards that Brenda um, was offering on her website or these released and let's see let's see what's in here oh I love these these are very sweet so we have sampler thimble I feel like a teacher <laughs> Scissors. Oh, yes. Buttons. I love these. Pin cushion. Collector. And needle. I am probably going to take a little um, ink and ink them up a little bit. They are very, very cool. Um, and just make them look a little... Um, aged but these are fantastic great for little displays so that's all I have for round one of market purchases um, I have lots more on my wish list 
and I have a package coming tomorrow and I will be attending um, tomorrow I'm gonna tomorrow night I'm gonna head down to Stitchville after work and uh, see what's up there and see what goodies that they have so if you're gonna be at or if you're um, if you're in Minnesota head to Stitchville and then on Saturday, I'm hoping to um, head to the Stitchery Nook, provided that um, everyone in my barn behaves, and I'm going to be heading there with my friend Shannon. We're going to make the trek. It's not that long. It's about an hour and 40 minute drive from my house, so, and Stitchville is a solid 50. So that's all I got. Um, super happy to share with you guys. Thank you for all your likes and comments. I always appreciate that when um, you hit that subscribe button or hit that like button. And I especially appreciate your comments. So um, that's all I have. I hope that you guys are getting your wish lists filled, your wish lists filled for um, your, and I hope that your market dreams come true. See you later. I hope to be back soon and I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week. Bye.